Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino. When we think about Rhino and industrial design, we usually think about creating and developing exterior shape and form, managing complex surface transitions, and very much concerning ourselves with the visual appearance of a product. However, very often as designers, we need to concern ourselves with interior features that are very often unseen, to describe, even if only in outline detail, how parts can be manufactured and assembled. Adding this type of detailing isn't just the preserve of engineers using engineering solid modelers, it can be done in Rhino too. In the first of two short videos, I'm going to look at how we can use Rhino to add internal detailing to an injection molded assembly, working onwards from the external or A surfaces. Let's look first at shelling. The starting point here are these two solids that comprise the upper and lower of an injection molded assembly. The outer or A surfaces are comprised entirely of single span surfaces, all of which are untrimmed with the exception of the top and bottom surfaces, which have trims on the small rounded corners. All of the surfaces are matched for curvature continuity and this modelling process is something we cover in the Simply Rhino Level 2 class. To develop the design as an injection moulding, we might want to do several steps. And the first of these would be to hollow out the solid to create a shell with a constant wall thickness. And to do this, we could use the shell command. I'll create a new layer and copy the top solid onto it and then look at this from the underside. Next, I'll run the shell command, which is on the solid tools toolbar here, specify a thickness, I'm going to use a value of 2.5 millimeters here. Then I choose whether to delete the original input or not. For now, I'll say yes. Finally, I pick a face to remove and shell will create the offset and leave a portion of the highlighted face to create a solid offset with a controlled face. The inner B surfaces are considerably more complex than the very simple A surfaces, particularly on the rounded transitions. And the reason for this is that the shell command creates an offset that is calculated to the absolute tolerance to which we are modeling. If I go to Rhino Options and Units, the absolute tolerance is set to 0.001 of a millimeter. So what that means is that the thickness here is 2.5 millimeters plus minus 0.001 of a millimeter. And in order to produce an offset within that very tight tolerance, Rhino adds some maths to the B surfaces to maintain the consistent offset. Now, of course, you may need this for some purposes, but if you are modeling something that is vacuum formed or a glass fiber molding where you can't control the B surface or indeed the thickness to any degree of accuracy, then you might want to create an offset with simpler surfaces at a lower tolerance. And we can do that with the offset command. But before we do this, I'm going to backtrack and undo the shell command. In Rhino 8, shell works with history. To see this, I'll turn history on, run shell, and set my thickness as before to 2.5 millimeters. But this time, I'll say no to deleting the original input object and enter. Now I'll have two objects, the original solid and the shell. If I hide the original solid, I can see the shell, but the fact that the original object is still in the file, although hidden, will let the history connection work. So I can now rerun the shell command and select edit. Pick the shell that is history connected, and now in the command line, I can change the thickness. So if I use a value of four millimeters, you'll see this update.
Now, if I want to create a shell that is less complex than is created with a shell command, then one way to do this is to use offset surface. Starting here with the solid, I'll extract the top face and hide it, leaving just the remainder of the A surfaces. Then I can use the offset command from the surface menu, pick the poly surface and enter. The arrows show the surface normal direction, which is the default offset direction, and I can flip this from the command line to offset inwards. Next, I'll set the distance to 2.5 mm. By default, the tolerance setting is set to the absolute modelling tolerance of 0.001 mm. So, I would get the complex surfaces that we had before. But of course, I can change this and I can set the value to, for example, 0.1 mm and then enter to let the offset be created. And you'll see now that I get B surfaces that are pretty much as simple as the A surfaces. However, the trade-off here is that the thickness will vary between 2.6 and 2.4 mm. But, of course, as I've mentioned before, that might be fine if we're doing something like a GRP moulding or a vacuum forming where the thickness isn't controlled by tooling or when we are more interested in the simplicity and the clarity of the surfaces rather than the accuracy of the offset. All I need to do to create a solid from here is to show the planar face that I extracted and then select the B surface and the planar surface, go to Curve, Curve from Objects, Intersection to create the intersection curve and then using Trim, carefully trim away the excess part on the B surface and the interior part of the planar surface. I can then delete the intersection curve and join everything back together which will result in a closed poly surface. I wouldn't suggest using the solid version of the offset command here because cleaning up the result and creating the planar surface that connects the A and B surfaces is probably going to entail more work. Next, I'm going to look at the lip and recess feature that is a fairly standard way of locating a two-part clamshell assembly together. I'll use the shell with the high tolerance offset so I've got a consistent wall thickness and that is necessary for the next steps. The top and bottom mouldings have both been shelled to a thickness of 2.5 mm and at the moment they are touching each other. The model is set out so that the bottom of the top moulding and the top of the lower moulding are at a Z height of zero. This makes it easier for me to calculate draft knowing that everything above zero will have a two degree taper in one direction and everything below two degrees in the opposite direction. I'd also point out at this stage that the side walls of the moulding are double curved so the effective draft increases as we move away from zero. There are a few ways that we can create the clamshell lip feature but I'd like to look at a method which allows me to create the detail as a 2D drawing and convert this easily into 3D. First I'll create a new layer called section and make it active. Then working in either the top or bottom orthographic view with just the upper moulding visible I'll make sure project is on and create a line perpendicular to the long edge here. Next I'll show the lower moulding and go back to the orthographic view. I'll switch the viewport mode to wireframe and use curve, curve from objects, section to create a section through both mouldings making sure to snap to both ends of the perpendicular line. If I have the extend option toggled to yes then this will create a section curve all the way through both mouldings. Now of course the section is only perpendicular at one end and so I'll mark this with a point. Next I'll turn off the layers with the mouldings on and switch to four view before creating a C plane aligned with the section. 
I'll use set C plane by three points, snap to the point for the C plane origin, the end of the line for the X axis, and in either the front or the right viewport, describe a vertical direction for the C plane orientation or Y axis. Now I can go to Panels, Named C planes, and save this C plane as Section. To create a planar view on the section, I can go to Set View Plan and then save this view in Named Views as Section. The sectional detail I need to create here is this, and you can see that we have a shadow gap or reveal here of 0.5 mm, and a raised lip on the lower moulding and a recess in the upper moulding. There's a clearance on this angle here for tolerance and the top of the lip touches the bottom of the recess. Back in Rhino I've created two new layers and drawn what needs to be removed from the top moulding and added to the lower moulding. I'll look first at creating the recess in the top moulding, so I'll make upper shell the active layer and turn off section and bottom lip then switch to perspective viewport and reset the seaplane to world top. As the section that I drew is already perpendicular to the outside of the shell, I can use sweep one rail to create the new geometry. I'll run this from the surface menu and in the options for chain edges I'll turn off auto chain and pick the eight edges of the moulding in sequence carefully making sure I'm pointing at the same surface edge with each pick. And then I can pick the sweep shape or cross section and from the sweep options I'll choose freeform, do not change cross sections and no refitting. To create a new solid from the swept poly surface and the top shell I can go to the solid toolbar and run boolean two objects. I can then select each of the objects and the cursor will change into a crosshair allowing me to left click and preview the possible results. When I see the result I want I can enter to complete the command and if I switch to a different viewport mode it's easier to see the result. For the lower moulding I'll use a similar technique and start with lower shell being the active layer and bottom lip visible. Next I'll extract the planar surface here and delete or hide this before using sweep one rail again to create the lip detail. This time I'll be using the edge of the B surface as the rail, hence requiring the high accuracy offset, and note that the edge of the section is touching the rail. I'll run sweep one again with the same settings as previous. On the inside of the moulding I'll have a coincident edge and on the outside I'll have this overlapping detail. I can easily trim off the excess surfaces by going to Curve, Curve from Object, Intersection and using the intersection curve to trim with. I'll need to be careful here that I remove all eight sections of the exterior surface. Once I've done that, I can turn off the bottom lip layer, select everything and use Join to create a closed solid poly surface and once again I can better see the result by using an environment map or custom display mode. To check the consistency of the fit, I could create local perpendicular sections as I did earlier when creating the geometry and to check the draft angle I can go to Analyze, Surface, Draft Angle Analysis and pick the part in question here. I'll change the required angle to positive 2 degrees and everything that is now blue has at least 2 degrees of taper and we can clearly see where the tool shuts off around the edge here. So we now have the upper and lower shelled and the clamshell lip feature created with the 0.5mm reveal or shadow gap between the assembled parts. 
One final check I could perform here is to check which parts of the assembly are touching. And if I run curve, curve from objects intersection, I'll see that I create a series of planar curves where the top of the lip touches the bottom of the recess. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments below. If you found this video useful then please hit the like button and remember that to keep up with the latest developments in Rhino you can subscribe to this channel. At Simply Rhino we offer training for Rhino and all its key plugins so check out our website for more details. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next video.